Okay, in this video, I wanted to go over the uh, wizard settings for the MCO PC5. So here we're in the uh, main setup screen. I don't have to worry about setting home. We're going to go into utility and the wizard. <clears throat> and we're going to work our way down the tree here, starting from the top. I'm going to expand the wizard to cover the full screen. So we're going to start with axis drive type. And this is where you select your uh, your drive that you're using on your machine. So you want to pick the closest one. Usually it's a lead shine uh, or something else that's close to it. If you have any questions, just go to the Centroid Users Forum and let us know what drives you got and provide the manual will help you out. One thing to note is step and direction, step and direction. So the signals are the same uh, no matter the drive. It's just that Centroid tries to pre-configure things for you to help you on your way. So anyway, you're going to want to select the, the drive type here. Um, mine are the, the, uh, the lead shine CSD 508s. So um, that's what would be chosen here. So you would select that and then you would load the drive type. I'm not going to do that now um, because uh, everything's configured. So the next thing you would do is you go to input definition. And in my case, we're using those Hall effect switches and we're using input one and input two. And these are normally open NPN Hall effect switches. So that's why these are red. If you needed if you look up here, it says red's normally open, green's normally closed, and to change the state, you just click on the number and you change the state, okay? Um, we're using drive OK, and this is how it's configured with the uh, C86 board from CNC for PC, and then here's spindle OK, and it is set for normally open currently. And then e-stop OK because we have a physical e-stop button and the contact box are normally closed. We set it for normally closed. Um, all the choices for your inputs are here and uh, that's under general purpose. Your limits. Um, and then there's an option for home. Home all is very popular. You can series all your normally closed uh, switches together and use home all and only use one input conserving the precious inputs that you have on Acorn. And then last but not least, there's home limit. If you want them to function the same, don't do this uh, for something um, like I'm using the Hall effect sensors on the pulleys of the lead screws because every time that sensor comes around it'll trip your machine because you've got it set to home limit and then uh, here's last but not least is probe how you configure your probes probe detect probe tripped and so forth but anyway for the CNC PC5 you can see here this is how I have it set up with the C86 uh, acorn uh, with the C86 uh, board from CNC for PC uh, output definitions uh, no fault out. I have assigned a output one. That's pretty typical. And I'm driving a larger uh, e-stop contactor you saw in my previous videos. Uh, nothing on output two, nothing on output three. Um, output four is spindle forward. This gets connected to your VFD's input for spin forward. And output five gets connected to your VFD spin reverse. Um, and then output six is drive reset out to uh, uh, reset your drives. Output 7 and Output 8 are currently not used. Um, seems as though I'm missing a spindle reset, which is, let's see here, 6. Uh, let's see here. I'm Let's go over here to should be VFD reset right here. So I have this misconfigured. So I'm going to highlight that one because uh, output six is to reset the VFD. 
So I want VFD reset out. Okay. So good that I'm going through this exercise because I caught that. Output 7, output 8 are not used. Um, so that takes care of the outputs. Axis configuration. All right. So um, it's important that you set up your steps per revolution properly. Steps per revolution are how many pulses, step pulses, does it take to turn your motor one full revolution. That's de determined by your drive and if it has dip switch settings, as you saw, uh, my lead shine drives do have it and I have them set to 2000 pulses per revolution. That's where this gets set. All right. Um, we went over the overall turns ratio. This is the gearing. Um, this is this includes the pitch of your lead screw and any pulley reduction. So if your pitch of your lead screw was five turns per inch and you had a two to one reduction from your uh, axis drive motor to the lead screw, you would have an overall turns ratio of 10. All right, so make sure you set this up right. Um, lash comp, we went over that. Um, that's basically to help take up, uh, it, I'm sorry, it's not taking up mechanical lash, it's trying to compensate for lash. This is pretty pretty reasonable here. If you have high backlash, you know, three, four, five plus thousands, you really need to tighten up your machine because uh, the control can't uh, compensate for a sloppy machine. Max rate, this is the max feed rate that you want to run your axis at uh, for closed loop. Um, I'm sure this, this little machine is probably capable of more than this, but this is uh, more than adequate for a small machine. Um, you would adjust it upward. Um, keep in mind using closed loop uh, steppers here. Um, you don't want to push these max rates. This is the this is the uh, the rapid from a G zero rapid basically. So from cutting to moving to the next point to cut, that's what this rate is. All right, you want to be careful with this when you can only go so far. Um, that's dictated by the number of pulses your drive can take, your overall turns ratio. Um, the voltage, how many, what the RPM of the motor is, and so forth. Fast jog is when you want to manually jog your machine. Um, again, I've got the max rate and the fast jog rate being the same, the slow jog rate being uh, 10 inches a minute in my case. It's plenty fast enough for this little machine. Excel, decel, it's, uh, these numbers can be tightened up a little bit, but this is a half a second from the time it gets the command to accelerate or decelerate the axis motor. Direction reversal. If when you move your axis, uh, it's moving in the wrong direction, this is where you would change that. So you'll see I have both the Z and the X uh, reversed. Um, drive enable delay. If your drive does not come on, your axis drive that is, your, if, if it doesn't come on online fast enough, it could uh, create a drive fault. In your control this is where you adjust that um, rarely actually I can't think of any time that I've had to go more than a quarter of a second um, so it's here um, linear jog increment um, when you want to jog if this ha happens to do with the x1 x10 x100 settings when you're in incremental mode on VCP or an MPG um, and it depends on the precision of the machine this little machine could do tenths so we can go to tenths or you can change it to thousandths and uh, go that that way. All right. And then the X1 increment, if you want to change it to thousandths, you can do it. You can do it to tenths, um, et cetera. This is where you change that. So that pretty much explains axis configuration, homing and travel. Um, the first option is wizard to generate the home program based on the selections below. So if you're using switches, uh, you will, you know, if you're using switches um, or if you're using, well, let me back up. So based on this stuff here, these, these selections, the wizard will create the cncm.hom program. It's an editable file. You can adjust it or change it. But just remember, every time you write the settings with this wizard to generate the automatic home program, 
based on selections below, it will override it. If you create a custom home program, then you'll want to choose this. I will create my own home program. Do not overwrite that cnct.home. cncm.home for mill, cnct.home for lathe. Um, in this case, we're letting it write the file. Um, homing type, automatic homing machine seeks switches to home. Uh, using sensors on this one, that's, that's the way it works. Um, so the home file program will be created. In my case, it's going to, I'll sh and I'll show you that in a minute. It goes into the Z positive and Z, it goes in Z positive and X positive direction to home. Um, simple homing is when you jog it to a point that you want it to be, you want to be home, you would click that. You don't need switches for that. Homing direction, um, choose a direction which the machine homes. Again, axis one, which would be Z, is in the positive direction. You would choose it here. Okay, and axis two is, is X. On a lathe, axis one is always Z, and on a lathe, axis two is always X. Don't try and change it. Um, so that it just says that we're going to move in the positive direction. Homing sequence. So uh, in this case, axis two is going to move first. That's X. We want to move the tool away. Uh, from the spindle center line and then axis two is Z will move the carriage away from the spindle itself. Um, software travel limits. This is where you, once you've got the machine all set up, you can basically jog the machine and determine how far the machine can travel in the opposite direction that you set home. See this is, they're both positive. So these numbers are going to be negative. So my Z can move negative 9.5 inches from home and that's it. So the soft limits, the control will stop the control. <clears throat> the control will stop the machine at, at negative 9.5 and likewise with X it'll stop it at 2. Machine parking, if you want to do a custom parking program, that is when you shut your machine down for the day, you can tell the machine where to go. Um, that's when you do a shutdown, I think it's F1, park the machine, it would follow this macro. All right, there is no axis pairing on this machine. It's a lathe, but uh, this is more for routers that have, uh, uh, that require two axis motors. There's two screws on a gantry to move the gantry. That's where you would set this up. Um, keep in mind, axis pairing, this is called software axis pairing. Um, you need the pro version to use software axis pairing. Advanced. Um, if for some reason you have to invert step and direction or the enables, as you see checked here, this is where you do it. And then step rate, um, you need to look at the specifications of your axis drives and see what they're capable of. Most of them are uh, capable of 200,000 steps per second. Um, that's quite fast. So um, you're allowed 100, 200K, and 400K steps per second here. Again, this is determined by your drive type. And if you're having some wonky stuff, go with 100K and base it from there. Um, see if it if uh, the axis uh, respond correctly, you're not losing steps. Um, so 100K is conservative. Now keep in mind your uh, max, um, let's go to the axis drive, I'm sorry. Let's go to axis configuration. Your max rates are determined by these steps per second. In other words, if you try and, and enter a max rate that just won't calculate out, the software is going to tell you. So um, you'll get higher rapids at higher step rates, but your drives have to um, be able to accept the fast the, the rate. So I always say start at 100K test your machine, then you can run to 200K and then test your machine. Very few drives will do 400K a, a second. Um, uh, I know the DMM Dyn2 and Dyn4s will use 400K. So that's it for um, the step rates. Spindle setup. Um, this machine is not set up for rigid tapping, though it could because it does have an encoder. Um, you'll see I have the slider checked for yes. And I have the spindle encoder count set to 4,000. This is a 1,000 line encoder. In quadrature, it's 4,000. There is a negative number in front of it because of the direction that the uh, encoder is turning in relation to the spindle. So if you get a fault when you uh, 
uh, start your lathe um, or mill, uh, try and put the negative sign in front of the, the uh, spindle encoder. Not a quadrature error, um, but uh, it might be that your spindle is turning one direction, your encoder is turning another, and this is where you do that. You put the negative sign or leave it without a negative sign. Spindle max speed in high range, this little lathe is set to 3500. Min speed in high range is 1000. If you have a belt pulley and you're going to be changing it, this is where you would do that. Um, this plays into the, uh, uh, the, the spindle speed uh, displayed on the machine if you're, or the, the ratio of the pulley speed. Um, that you've got set, or if you, this is if you have a high speed range, you have, say you have a three step pulley, this is where you set that up. There's a high range, a med medium range, and a low range, and you're going to need to know how to calculate um, that uh, reduction here. And this is where it's done. Lathe setup, uh, it's obviously it's a horizontal lathe standard. They do have vertical lathes. And then the tool post on this is in the front of the spindle, not behind it. Um, many uh, lays with turrets would be rear, and this is where you would select that. Um, this machine has no probe, but this is where you would set that up. Some good explanations here. And then uh, there is a link to the probe setup documentation when you're doing that. Control peripherals, input devices, touch screen, yes. So I have a touch screen on it, USB control pad. Do not have one. Virtual control panel is turned on. Wireless MPG. Uh, this machine will have a wireless MPG. Um, I'll go ahead and turn that on now so I don't forget. The newest uh, MPGs coming from Centroid are WMP4s. And uh, we'll just, we can set it to quick response or balanced response. We'll just leave it at quick. Um, DB25 mapping, if you're using the DB25 connector, we're using screw terminals here. This is where you would select that. Um, this is automatically set, selected for you based on the drive type you select in the axis drive type. Um, in this case, we're using screw terminals because that's where the C86 CNC for PC board is connected to. Preferences, these are just preferences. Um, if you want, this is these are all set, these are generally set to defaults. The CNC configuration menu password if you go into CNC 12 and you do F1 and F3 config you have to enter this number 137 you can change it um, display distance to go you can turn that on and off here display machine coordinates you know you can turn them on and off here display active GNM codes I have it set to always feed rate um, the feed rate override on BCP the maximum percentage um, you set all that stuff here feed rate override minimum percentage um, that's here. Um, runtime graphics on startup. Uh, when you start a G code, it will go to runtime graphics. It defaults to that. If you don't like that and you want to see the G code running by the screen, you would turn it off here. Remember the last G code program after restart it is defaulted to no. Um, if you have a piece of soft, if you have a G code program that you like to run, and say in the afternoon you set your lathe up and you're running it, and then you want to start up the next day and you don't want to have to reload the G code. Um, and you want it to remember it, this is where you would turn this on. Um, it's set to no so that uh, it's got a null file in there. So if somebody accidentally, um, usually a newbie or if you're just getting started, you want to leave this set to no once you're familiar with the machine and running it and you want to leave the last G-code program in there, you can turn this to yes and start. Allow cycle start in run menu, you can turn that on. Um, if you're in the run menu of the software, CNC 12, you can use the cycle start button. Display keyboard jogging legend on Alt-J. Yes, if you do the Alt-J, it'll tell you what the keyboard shortcuts are to move your machine and allow you to move the machine using a keyboard. BCP jogging state on Acorn Power Up. It defaults to continuous and slow. If you want to change that to incremental, you can do that here. You can make it fast, uh, uh, you know, continuous. The default is continuous slow. Custom VCP skin, um, we're not using that here. Um, if you have a lube pump, this machine does not. This is where you'd set it up to turn on an electric uh, lube pump. Um, there 
our information right here. If you click on that, it kind of gives you an idea how to set that up. Now, be careful now. It's, this is critical. Um, if you have an automatic lube pump, you want to set it up properly. Um, what this is allowing you to do is when it's in MDI or spindles running, um, the, the pump will be turned on for, in this case, cumulative time run counter. It'll, it'll uh, see every 30 minutes, it'll turn the lube pump on for 15 seconds. So be very careful when you set this up if you have a machine with an electric automatic lube pump. Um, read the documentation and understand it. Um, otherwise, your machine may not get any or enough lubrication to the screws and the, the slideways. Um, we have the wizard here. Uh, you can kind of leave all this stuff alone. Um, you can read through this if you like. And then the VCP aux keys. If you want to um, assign the auxiliary keys in VCP, you can do that here. And there are a few defaults. Um, and it will show those keys if you've turned them on. Uh, VCP 2.0. Um, I'm going to go ahead. VCP 2.0 lets you customize the virtual control panel buttons and how they operate. Um, at this point, because I did make a couple changes, I'm going to write the settings to CNC 12. Oh, got an error here. Interesting. It's good to catch, see this sort of thing. It says the following errors must be con corrected for PLC settings to be saved. VFD direction M3, M4 cannot be used in conjunction with spin forward. Okay. I know probably what happened here. Let's go take a look at that. Output definitions. You see here, you have to be very careful. I wanted VFD reset and I didn't grab the right one. So what we want to do is we can grab this one. And sometimes you have to be really careful when you when you change it. You can left click hold, pull it out, and then we want VFD reset, left click hold. And see, we've got reset out. And you can see right here, VFD direction. So you have to be very deliberate and careful. What it was barking at is I had VFD direction. Um, if you use this, you can use one relay output because it's a normally open, normally closed contact. You can use this instead of using two outputs. All right. Because it was so close to the VFD reset. Let me put that back and you'll see it. You see here, VFD reset out. When I grabbed it, I may have gotten too close to VFD direction and got that one. All right, I've done that before. So, got that fixed. Let's write the settings. And we're going to click yes. Okay, read this. Warning PLC configuration has changed. The wizard and CNC 12 must be shut down and restarted for PLC changes to apply. Okay, so this one requires a, a, a Acorn power down and the software exit. And when you click on it, I'll click on OK. And you'll see my relay, me stop relay just de-energized. You'll see here it says, please power cycle Acorn board, wait for the heartbeat, and then press OK to continue. And if you look down here in the corner, it says disconnected from CNC 12. So it's uh, dropped communications to the Acorn board. I, Because I can reach in and get the power connector to Acorn, I've unplugged it. I'm plugging it back in. So I'm power cycling the Acorn board. Now I'm watching the heartbeat LET. It's blinking rapidly right now. Now it's blinking at one pulse per second, and we'll click on OK, and it'll restart CNC 12. Now sometimes you don't have to do a restart of the board, but it'll say exit CNC 12 and restart. Definitely, okay, it says I don't have the, the wireless MPG uh, connected yet, but it's it's there. Uh, but sometimes it says shut down CNC 12 and restart for changes to take effect. Make sure you do that, uh, especially when you're working with the the speeds. If you change RPM, max R spindle RPM, and so forth. If it tells you to shut it down, shut it down. Shut down CNC 12, which just basically means do a shutdown, exit CNC 12. 
and uh, this comes up every once in a while. Um, they say it has to do with the speed of the computer. This computer happens to meet the minimums, but every once in a while this will pop up. So just close the program so it'll close virtual control panel. And uh, we can restart CNC 12. And again, it's barking because it's not seeing the wireless MPG. I don't have it connected yet. I'll just click OK. I will reset and I'll go ahead and home my machine. And it's homed and ready to go to work. So I hope going over, it's kind of an overview of the wizard settings. I hope that helped you out. And those were specific to this PC5 with the C86 board running the lead shine cs d508 drives all right we'll talk to you in the next video take care and have fun